I had a conversation with one of my friends who likes NASCAR, and he said something along the lines of, Montoya was only good at road courses. I think a lot of NASCAR fans think that Juan Pablo Montoya wasn't that good of a driver or was only good at road courses. So today, I'm going to take a look at his F1 career and his NASCAR career, compare the two, and see how good he was. During the 2000 United States Grand Prix, BMW Williams announced the signing of the 1999 Kart Rookie of the Year and Champion Juan Pablo Montoya to a two-year contract. Montoya would be replacing Jensen Button and would be joining Ralph Schumacher in 2001 on the F1 grid in the FW23. Montoya would start his F1 career with four straight retirements. At Barcelona, Montoya would score his first ever F1 podium, finishing second behind Michael Schumacher. Montoya would retire from the next three Grand Prix. At the Nürburgring, both Williams would finish the race for the first time in 2001. Montoya would finish second with the fastest lap and once again behind Michael Schumacher. Montoya would once again retire at Magny Corps. He would come up just short of a podium at Silverstone getting fourth. Montoya got pole and set the fastest lap at Hockenheim before retiring from the event. Montoya got 8th in Hungary and would then get the pole in Belgium before once again retiring. At Monza, Montoya would qualify on pole, but this time he wouldn't be forced to retire. Instead, he would go on to score his first ever F1 victory. Montoya would set the fastest lap at Indianapolis but would once again retire. In the final race of 2001, the Colombian would get his third second place finish. He would end 2001 with one win, four podiums, three poles, three fastest laps, and 11 retirements. The FW23 was fast, but suffered serious reliability problems. Of the 17 Grand Prix, only four of them saw both Williams running at the finish. Montoya finished sixth in the standings. 2002 saw Montoya start with a second place finish in Australia. Malaysia would see Montoya and Michael Schumacher come together on the first lap in turn one. Montoya went to the outside of Schumacher, who moved to the right to cover off Montoya. And Schumacher understeered and went wide into Montoya, resulting in the loss of Schumacher's front wing and pushing Montoya off the track. Montoya would receive a drive through penalty for the incident. The penalty received much criticism, even from the two drivers involved. Montoya said, quote, I tried the outside of Michael because he had moved to the right at the start. I gave him room, but he said he had a bit of understeer and he went into me. I thought it was a racing incident and I think it was the same for him, end quote. Schumacher would say, quote, we have seen situations far more extreme where nothing happened and today there was a little touch and something was done. We don't have consistency in decisions, and that is something we need in the future, end quote. He did say that if Montoya had left more room, that they wouldn't have touched, but he was further asked if he thought the penalty was too harsh, with his response being, quote, to be honest, yes. However, Ferrari team boss Ross Braun saw it differently than his driver, saying, quote, the steward saw it as an avoidable incident because Michael and Montoya were alongside each other and there was no space for Michael to go in, end quote. Montoya became the first driver to receive a drive through penalty instead of a stop-go penalty. Despite the penalty, Montoya would rebound to finish second behind teammate Ralph Schumacher. He would follow this up with a fifth and a fourth at Sao Paulo and Imola. Montoya got back on the podium with second and third at Barcelona and Austria. Montoya would then retire from Monaco, Canada and the Nürburgring. He bounced back with a third at Silverstone and then fourth and then second at Magnicor and Hockenheim. Hungary saw Montoya fall to 11th, but he then got back on the podium with a third at Spa. He would retire at Monza before getting a pair of 4th place finishes at Indianapolis and Suzuka. Montoya would finish 3rd in the standings this year ahead of his teammate despite having more retirements. He would finish 2002 with no wins, but 7 podiums, 7 poles, and 3 fastest laps. 
Montoya wouldn't have to wait long to get a podium in 2003 as he did it in the first race in Melbourne. He would follow this up with a 12th in Sepang and a retirement in Brazil. Montoya would get a 7th and a 4th at Imola and then Barcelona before having to retire in Austria. Montoya would come up big in Monte Carlo winning the Monaco Grand Prix. This would give Montoya two thirds of racing's triple crown after having already won the 2000 Indy 500 with Chip Ganassi. Montoya would once again be on the podium in Canada, this time with third. He would then go on a run of three consecutive second place finishes at the Nürburgring, Magnicor, and Silverstone. He would then once again return to the top step of the podium with a win at Hockenheim, followed by a pair of podiums, third at Hungary and second at Monza. Montoya would drop off at the end of the season with a sixth at Indy after getting a drive through penalty and a retirement at Suzuka. Montoya would once again finish third and once again ahead of his teammate. He ended 2003 with two wins, nine podiums, three fastest laps, and one pole. During 2003, Montoya and McLaren announced that Montoya would be driving for McLaren in 2005. 2004 would be Montoya's last season with Williams, and it was his least successful season to this point. It has been widely reported that Montoya and the Williams team did not have a good relationship. He got second at Malaysia, Montoya would get a third at Imola after tangling with Michael Schumacher, with the German forcing the Colombian wide on the exit of Toza. In a press conference, Schumacher said he didn't see Montoya, Montoya being shown a replay and in response to Schumacher said, quote, I'm amazed. I actually got in front of him when we were breaking a little bit. Oh, no, he didn't see me there. No chance. You know, you either got to be blind or stupid to not see me. End quote. Montoya was disqualified from both races in North America at Montreal and Indy. Williams was excluded from Canada after the brake ducks were deemed illegal. At Indy, Montoya had an issue with his car and confusion arose over what he should do. It was decided by the team that he should switch to the T-car, but the decision came too late and he was disqualified for switching cars after the start of the formation lap. Montoya would have finished 5th as no decision was made until the end of the Grand Prix. The majority of the other races saw him run 4th to 8th in the bottom half of the points. Montoya would end up winning the last race of the season at Brazil. Montoya would finish 5th in the standings. Montoya started 2005 with 6th in Australia and 4th in Malaysia. He missed the next two races due to an injury and then came back with three straight points finishes. Montoya would be disqualified in Canada for the second consecutive year. This time it was for a failure to yield at the pit exit lights. Montoya along with the 13 other Michelin cars failed to start at Indy. And I made a whole other separate video on that so... Go check it out. Montoya would retire from a podium position at Magnicor. Montoya would win at Silverstone and then follow that up with a second at Hockenheim. The Colombian retired from the lead in Hungary but bounced back in Turkey with his third podium of the season, finishing third. He then picked up a win at Monza. Montoya retired at Spa but was classified as 14th. Montoya would win in Sao Paulo for the second consecutive season. He would then finish the season with double retirements in Japan and China. Montoya said that McLaren worked a lot harder to fit the car to his driving style than Williams did. 2006 was set to be Montoya's last year with McLaren, as they had signed Fernando Alonso to take over in 2007, and McLaren failed to pick up the option on Montoya's contract. Montoya started 2006 with a 5th in Bahrain and 4th in Malaysia. In Australia, Montoya hit a curb which threw his engine into safety mode, forcing him to retire. Montoya picked up his first podium at Imola. He then retired at the Nürburgring and Barcelona. Montoya grabbed his second podium of the year at Monaco and followed that up with a 6th at Silverstone before two consecutive retirements at Canada and Indy. 
Following the United States Grand Prix, Montoya announced that he had signed a contract to race in NASCAR in 2007. Following this announcement, McLaren terminated the remainder of his contract effective immediately. Juan Pablo Montoya actually already had experience driving a NASCAR stock car as he drove one for the first time on June 11th, 2003 at Indianapolis when he and Jeff Gordon swapped cars. Montoya's move to NASCAR would reunite him with former kart owner Chip Ganassi. The pair won a championship and an Indy 500 together. However, Montoya would have to learn two new cars in his move to NASCAR because in 2007, NASCAR was introducing their Gen 5 car, or the Car of Tomorrow, and we're going to race it alongside the Gen 4 car. Montoya was slated to drive the 42 Dodge for Chip Ganassi Racing. Montoya made his stock car debut in 2006 in the ARCA Series, running the final two races for Cunningham Motorsports. Montoya got an impressive 3rd at Talladega and then 24th at Iowa. Montoya would then run the final four races in the NASCAR Xfinity Series for Chip Ganassi Racing. He got an 11th at Memphis, 28th at Texas, 20th at Phoenix, and 14th at Homestead. Along with that, Montoya would also run the final cup race in 2006 at Homestead, finishing 34th. Despite the poor finish, Montoya had actually been running just outside the top 10 before being caught up in a wreck. On March 4th, 2007, Juan Pablo Montoya would win his first ever race in a stock car at the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez Circuit in Mexico City in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Montoya spun teammate Scott Pruitt going down into turn one with eight laps to go. Montoya had 10 lap fresher tires and made the move to the inside and Pruitt came down. You could say the move was maybe a little over aggressive, but it's a tough call to lay blame, I think. Andy Petrie for ESPN said, quote, It looked like to me there's no blame to go around. Scott could have seen him there and maybe gave him just a little more room, end quote. Pruitt would rebound to a 5th place finish after the spin. On the cup side of things, Montoya started out with a finish of 19th in the Daytona 500. He picked up his first ever top 5 in just his 5th cup race at Atlanta. And then added a 16th at Martinsville and then a top 10 at Texas with 8th. Montoya struggled the next 6 races, failing to break into the top 20. At Pocono, he would get 20th but would then follow that up with a last place finish at Michigan. The next race was Sonoma. Having already won on a road course in the Xfinity Series, Montoya was in excellent position for a good finish. But Montoya struggled in qualifying and ended up 32nd. Montoya would not just have a good day and drive through the field, but he would have a great day and would win the race. Montoya followed this win up with two top 20s in the next three races, and then a second at Indy. Montoya finished 2007 with one win, three top fives, and six top tens. Montoya would finish 20th in the standings and would also win Rookie of the Year. The other rookies were Paul Menard, David Reagan, David Rudiman, and fellow open wheel driver A.J. Allmendinger. 2008 was a little bit of a step back for Montoya, he finished 32nd in Daytona to start the season. Montoya would get into a groove though as he put together 8 top 20s in a row. This included a runner up finish at Talladega. Montoya would only finish in the top 20 10 times in the remaining 27 races. His best two finishes unsurprisingly came on the road courses. He got a 6th at Sonoma and a 4th at Watkins Glen. 2009 would be a, a big year for Montoya. Seven of the first ten races, Montoya would get a top 20, including three top 10s with a ninth at Bristol, seventh at Texas, and a tenth at Richmond. He would also pick up his first career pole at Talladega. The next ten races, Montoya only finished outside the top 20 once. During this time, he would get six top 10s. Montoya dominated at Indianapolis but was penalized after a late green flag pit stop. 
for speeding on pit road. Montoya on the radio said, quote, NASCAR, if you do this to me, I'm going to kill you, end quote. Needless to say, there was no follow-through on the threat, but Montoya was very upset with the penalty and felt he didn't speed. He served his penalty and it forced him out of an opportunity to win and he ultimately finished 11th. Montoya got a 2nd at Pocono and a 6th at Watkins Glen. He struggled at Michigan and Bristol but got a 3rd at Atlanta, followed by a 19th place finish at Richmond. Juan Pablo Montoya became the first foreign born driver to qualify for the chase. He was placed 11th after finishing the regular season in 8th. Montoya would work his way up to his high as 3rd during the chase. He had 5 top 5s in the first 6 races, but then only had 1 top 10 in the remaining 4, and dropped down to 8th place in the standings. Montoya's 2010 season started with inconsistency, as 5 of his first 10 races saw him finish 26th or worse. In the other 5 races, his worst finish was 10th. Montoya started to become a little more consistent, but still struggled to completely eliminate poor finishes. At Watkins Glen, Montoya would score his second Cup Series win, leading 74 of the 90 laps. Montoya became the first foreign-born driver to win multiple times. After a second career win, he went on a run of four top 10 finishes. Montoya would finish 10th at Talladega for his only other top 10 of the season. He would end the season with one win, six top fives, 14 top tens, but also 13 finishes of 26 or worse. Montoya started off 2011 with a sixth place finish at Daytona and then got a third in the third race of the season at Las Vegas. He qualified on pole at Auto Club and finished 10th. He scored another top five at Martinsville, finishing fourth. In his next seven races, he would finish no better than 12th with four of those being 23rd or worse. He got top 10s at Pocono and Daytona before going on another run of disappointing results. He would only score two more top 10s, one at Watkins Glen and the other at New Hampshire. Montoya would finish 2011, 21st in points with zero wins, two top fives and eight top 10s. 2012 didn't exactly start the way Montoya probably wanted. And most people may only remember Montoya for this one incident. In the second half of the Daytona 500, Montoya made a pit stop under caution complaining about a serious vibration. As he left pit road and accelerated around the track to come back down pit road, Something broke going down the back straightaway, and as he entered turn three, the car sparked and snapped to the outside wall, crashing into a jet dryer, setting the track on fire. Both Montoya and the driver of the jet dryer were okay. As a result of the crash, Montoya finished 39. 2012 would see Montoya have five DNFs and just struggle to score top tens. He only had two. Bristol and Michigan. Montoya finished 22nd in the driver standings. 2013 was another year of inconsistency for Montoya. He was in position to win at Richmond but ended up 4th after a late caution. He was leading at Sonoma on the last lap when he ran out of fuel. His best finish came at Dover where he finished 2nd. The finish was regarded as controversial as Jimmy Johnson was black flag for jumping a late restart on Montoya. Montoya stated that Johnson was trying to lay back and time it and that had Jimmy not jumped the restart, he probably would have just passed him anyways. And that had he only beat him by a bumper, NASCAR wouldn't have called it, but that they did because Johnson was so far ahead of the rest of the field too. Montoya also said he felt bad for Johnson as he had the dominant car. Jimmy Johnson said that Montoya exploited a loophole in the rule and said NASCAR should look at how they officiate it. Robin Pemberton, NASCAR's director of competition, stood by the decision to penalize Johnson as, quote, an easy call. The following week, Montoya's reaction to being told by reporters that Johnson said he found a loophole in the rule was 
laughter and quote, wow, I'm that good. That's a compliment, end quote. Montoya would finish 21st in the standings. Kyle Larson would replace Montoya in the 42 in 2014. Montoya would run two races in 2014 for Roger Penske in the 12 car with an 18th at Michigan and a 23rd at Indy. So now, here's where we answer the question. How good was Juan Pablo Montoya as an F1 driver? How good was he as a NASCAR driver? And was he only good at road courses? So, of the seven full seasons for Montoya in NASCAR, he beat his teammate in four of those years. In 2007, he beat teammates Reed Sorensen and David Stremme. Montoya finished 20th, Sorensen 22nd, and Stremme 24th. In 2008, Montoya would once again beat his teammate. Montoya got 25th, and Sorensen was 32nd. 2009, Montoya finished 8th, and future cup champion Martin Truex Jr. finished 23rd. 2010 was the first season Montoya was beat by a teammate, as Jamie McMurray finished 14th and Montoya finished 17th. 2011 saw Montoya back in the familiar position of beating his teammate. Montoya finished 21st and McMurray finished 27th. 2012, McMurray would just edge Montoya as McMurray finished 21st and Montoya 22nd. 2013, McMurray finished 15th with Montoya 21st. Montoya finished his F1 career running 94 races with 7 wins, 30 podiums, 13 pulls, an average start of 5.3, and an average finish of 8.3. Montoya's best points finish was 3rd twice, 2002 and 2003 with Williams. An interesting statistic is that Montoya retired from 35.11% of his races in F1. Montoya's time at Williams saw him take over a car that Jensen Button drove to an 8th place in 2000. He got 6 before a pair of 3rd place finishes and then a 5th in 2004. After Montoya's departure from Williams, Mark Webber took the FW27 to a 10th place finish. Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso took over the McLaren in 2007. Hamilton picked up 2nd with Alonso 3rd. Now, there's really no good way to compare performance here because Montoya never ran a full season in the McLaren, but Montoya got fourth in 2005 while missing two races. It's also important to note that in 2005, he was also disqualified from the race. In NASCAR, Montoya ran 255 races and had two wins, 24 top fives, 59 top tens, nine pulls, an average start of 17.9, and an average finish of 19.8. His best finish in points came in 2009 when he finished 8th. Kyle Larson took over in 2014 and was able to get a 17th points finish. And then he then fell to 19th place in 2015. 2016, however, Larson would start to put together some good seasons. Jamie McMurray also showed improved performance in 2015. McMurray got a points finish of 13th. This was his highest since 2005 when he finished 12th. So, really the point I'm trying to make here is, in NASCAR, Montoya drove for a midfield team and got midfield results. If you look at a performance comparison chart between the 1 and the 42 from the years of 2009 to 2018, the biggest difference you'll notice is 2009 but the one car picked up performance in 2013 and the 42 did it in 2014 montoya wasn't in the car in 2014 and we'll never know if he would have been better but jamie mcmurray also picked up his performance so i think the point is the cars were getting better montoya's performance was pretty comparative towards his teammate mcmurray and as teammates you would expect them to have the same equipment or pretty close now people are gonna say oh he wasn't good on ovals because he never won on an oval he actually has won on an oval but not in nascar but he was in position several times for wins on ovals in nascar in fact three of montoya's five indycar wins were on ovals so in a sport with a balanced schedule of ovals and road courses he won more on ovals 
than he did on road courses. But in NASCAR, Montoya's best track based off average finish is Watkins Glen at 13.57. Not really surprising to most people. Most people would also think that his second best track would be Sonoma. It's not. It's actually Kentucky at 15.0. Now, yes, he ran the least number of races there, but it's averages, so it still holds up. Phoenix is third at 15.07. Then Sonoma at 16.14. But the point is, there's always he had higher average finishes at than one of the road courses. So you can't just say he was only good at road courses. Montoya had better F1 results, but he also drove for two of the top F1 teams in Williams and McLaren. In NASCAR, Montoya drove for a midfield team and got midfield results. He didn't overachieve, but he also didn't underachieve. I'd say Montoya is better at road courses than ovals, but that's because that was his background in racing. I'd also say that Montoya was better at open wheel cars than NASCAR, but again, that was his background. But I wouldn't say that Montoya was only good at road courses. I think Montoya is a good race car driver in general. While he probably would have liked to have seen more success in NASCAR, I think he got reasonable performance out of his cars, and as I said before, he drove for midfield teams and got midfield results. In F1 and NASCAR, his results were pretty close or better than his teammates, and what you would expect to be the same or very similar equipment. He's certainly a talented road course driver, but he's also proven he can win on ovals, having won two Indy 500s. His first Indy 500 win came in his first ever attempt. In 2015, Montoya actually tied Scott Dixon for the IndyCar Championship with Dixon holding the tiebreaker. He won the kart championship in his rookie year. Montoya has 324 hours of Daytona wins to go along with his 2019 IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Montoya has raced a wide array of cars and won in all of them. IndyCar, F1, NASCAR, kart, IMSA are all series he's won in. So now, you've heard from me, and now I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on Juan Pablo Montoya? Do you think he was a good NASCAR driver? Do you think he was only good on road courses? So drop a comment and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and until next time, so long everybody.